Welcome to this tutorial for MIDI Widgets. MIDI Widgets is a Vision Pro app that allows you to place virtual MIDI controllers inside your physical space and to anchor them so that you can leave the room or change locations and have them exactly where you left them when you return. So when you launch MIDI Widgets, it will show you this dialogue that explains you some of the principles, but I will walk you through every step of the way to set it up with this subsequent 37 synthesizer. So, when MIDI Widgets launches, you have scenes that are available to you, and the first one is automatically created, and it's called Home. It is empty, but before diving in there, let's already set up the MIDI connection for that scene so that your virtual controllers can actually communicate with the synthesizer. If you look at the left-hand side, you see a number of tabs. Pick the MIDI tab, and then you see currently there's one MIDI device that is known by the Vision Pro. It's called Network Session. This synthesizer is only able to communicate over DIN MIDI or USB MIDI. So in order to connect it to the Vision Pro, one of the easiest ways of doing so is to use these dongles called WIDI Master and created by a company called CME. All you have to do is to plug them into the DIN MIDI ports of your device, and then these will be available over Bluetooth MIDI. Just make sure you plug the input in the right one and the output also in the right one. Then go into Setup Bluetooth MIDI inside MIDI Widgets, do a scan for Bluetooth MIDI devices and give permission to do so. And you will see that the MIDI, was the MIDI master appears, but we're not connected to it yet. Let's connect to it. It will ask you to pair with it. Once you do this once, you will not get this pop-up anymore. And now it will create this connection. You can go out of the Bluetooth configuration windows and you see the WIDI master appear as another MIDI output now on your device. You can select it and now Home is able to use this. So let's go back to the scenes and open your Home scene, which will create an immersive space into which you have the freedom to create any virtual controller you want. So let's open it and then give it permissions to track your hands because all of your tools will be attached to your wrist with this little pop-up. And currently we have the Create and Positioning tool active. I'm going to dismiss this dialog that explains what I'm just going to demonstrate. And in order to create your first widget, just look at one of the transparent widgets, which are blueprints, tap and drag to create it. If you look at a widget and pinch with two fingers, one on each hand, you can actually rotate and orient it and then reposition it. Let's create another fader and snap it to the side. Then let's create a knob, also snap it, and one button that I will put here. So now we're done with creating an initial set of widgets. Go back to your wrist, look at the tool that is active, and if you tap, it will expand and show you other options that you can use. In this case, I want to edit the current widgets. So I tap the edit button and I can collapse this back so that it's out of sight. And any of the widgets I look at now, I can tap on and it will appear a few dialogues that allow me to configure exactly what I want to do with them. First thing, let's just change the color a little bit. Um, imagine that this one, I want it to be blue. I can just drag and make it blue. And then I want to have the markers be yellow. I can drag and make them yellow um, and, some, and a little bit brighter. All of that is possible. Now, the cool thing is that you can copy and paste these colors any which way you want. You can also copy and paste an entire setup of colors. So if I look at the bottom here and then select this controller and paste, you can see that the colors have been exactly copied over. Let's go back to the first one. And I want this one to control the filter cutoff. For the sub 37, that is a control change message. And by default, it is set up to be sent on output channel 10. So let's go to the output channel, type in 10, and let's go to the CC number and set it to CC number 19, which if you look at the manual of the sub 37, it will indicate that this is the filter frequency. I can make it 14 bit because the sub 37 selects, uh, supports that. And I can go into layout and let's say that I want to give it a name so that you know that this is a filter cutoff and I'm just 
putting in cutoff return and you can see it appear here. I actually want that name to have the same color as a control so they just copy paste it and now it's nice. I can do the same thing for the other widget here. Um, I want to control filter resonance. Again, I can go to MIDI channel 10. I can do CC number 21, also make it 14 bit and then go to layout and call this resonance. There we go. So now these two, and let's go back in and actually change that color again, because when I copied this, this scheme, it had yeah, the green color for the name. So these two are now set up. Um, let's, let's try if they work. So I can bring my HUD back, tap on the, on, on the current tool, and then use the third tool, which is uh, Control and Send MIDI. So I can collapse it, and I can now use these faders. And you see that the SERP37 is receiving MIDI information, right? So I can play a sound. And control it. Now you have two ways to interact with these faders and the same for the knobs. Either you drag them in the natural orientation of the widget or you drag up and down. Depends on what your preference is. Sometimes one is easier than the other. MIDI widgets determines which one you're using by the first few movements that you make. So if you start in the direction of the control, that will be the one that works and up and down doesn't work anymore. If you start upwards or downwards, that will be the one that works and the natural orientation of the control will not work anymore. So now we've set up two controls and let's set up a third one. Um, so I'm going to open up the filter, reduce the resonance, just for good, good measure and then go back to the knob here. And I want the knob to actually control volume, go back to the MIDI channel, make it 10, and volume is 7, let's make it 14-bit, and then call this volume. There we go. So if we go back to control and send MIDI, I can use this. And control the volume of my synthesizer. Now let's configure this button and this button I'm going to use to send a program change. So I'm going to again edit it. Let's give it another color. Let's um, go to the base color. Let's make it red. And the control color. Let's completely make it white. And then I want to send out a program change on channel 10 again. And let's leave it at the default program number 0, which is a really nice patch. Um, and let's try it. Let's use it. So control and send. So currently you see that across the sky is selected. I can tap this and it's going to switch to analog delay. But you notice that as I tap it, it actually stays stuck and that is not what I want. So I can go back to settings, edit this and then say reset on release. And let's give the name here. Let's say analog. delay. And now when you go to control and send MIDI, when you use the control, you can see that it resets automatically when you release your gesture. Now when we go back to the edit mode, there's actually a neat feature where you can copy this widget and create a new one with exactly the same settings. So if you go to layout in the bottom left corner, there is copy and it will copy it with exactly the same settings and place it to the right. Then I can look at it, select it, and I know that I want to change to another patch, the patch we had in the beginning, and that is number 45, and I think it is called Across the Sky. So let's give it that name, Across the Sky. There we go. And then go back to Control and Send MIDI, and now I can look at this button and see that it changed to Across the Sky. And this is a really easy way while I'm playing to switch. And I can use these controls, change the volume, 
bring in the resonance and so on. So now this is my setup in this room. I can leave MIDI widgets and this is stored in my home scene. If I go back in there, you can see that everything is restored exactly where it was before. And this is remembered for other rooms, other locations, really allowing you to build out this virtual control surface that is appropriate for anything that you want to do. Well, thanks for watching. I hope this was useful and see you next time. Bye.